name is William Michael Forbes. I want to welcome you to a morning message. I'm a spiritual medium, a channel, and an intuitive life coach. And essentially what that means is I can uh, help other people to solve problems in life. I can talk to non-physical beings and access to other, other dimensions of consciousness to bring in information and ideas that aren't naturally or readily available to us on this physical plane. Although they always tell me that there's someone on this planet that always knows anything that can be thought of or considered. There's always someone on this planet that always has an answer that we, we need or has the information we require. Um, but the reason uh, I'm on this morning is on my walk with our dog today, uh, I'm coming back and uh, the words Einstein came to my mind. I went, Einstein? And what about Einstein? And then the thoughts came to my mind. He created a formula for understanding mathematically what the universe consisted of. Now, I'm not a mathematician. I don't know much about formula, or I, I barely did well in algebra in high school, but I am not afraid to explore new possibilities, so I started to engage this vibration that labeled itself as Einstein to me and started to question about what uh, this constant that it referred to was. And it said, the only element in his mathematical formulas that, were, that, that was actually missing was a constant that he called consciousness. He says, Consciousness is the one constant in the measurable universe as humans know it in this physical dimension. And that without that factor into the process, um, he's also saying emotion too is another element. Consciousness and emotion. Um, when I ask him why, why consciousness is a constant, he says because every facet of creation has some degree of awareness. And that degree of awareness enables different parts of the creation to interact with other parts of the creation. Um, yeah, it's kind of like from what I understand, when I'm getting, he's showing me a symbol of the snake um, consuming its own tail, so that consciousness and awareness interact like that, they complete a complete cycle. Um, he's saying that's not quite accurate. Consciousness is the constant that's throughout all known universe, as humans understand it, that emotion is the energy that drives the effects of consciousness when it, inter when it interacts with itself. Consciousness and emotion. So consciousness, when I ask him, consciousness, does conscience drive emotion, or does emotion drive consciousness? He says those two in any equation can be flipped around. Because energy can affect consciousness, as consciousness can affect energy. Um, it's like getting in, he says, it's like getting into the chicken and egg. There's no point in trying to figure out which one came first. Um, but wh whatever one you put first alters what follows. And that's the important, is what you place first alters what follows. And he says this is true in any of his formulations. In any of his mathematical equations, you, you, whatever you change, it only alters what follows. That's all that, that, it, that it really means. And your willingness to explore and comprehend what follows when you change the positioning of a concept in any of, uh, he's saying, in any of my equations, if you change, you will change the outcome of how that will impact time, space, and matter. Um, formulas, he says, formulas were not meant to be static uh, compilations of information, but were meant to be a dynamic representation of a physical medium through an intellectual process of conceptualization. That the human mind has great capabilities in terms of remembering, but has very limited capabilities in terms of trying to function from a perspective of knowing uh, what that um, um, what the present moment would be in relation to all other things, for it is only from the moment of this time, I'm trying to, it's only from the moment of this time that you can possibly know what can follow, for your consciousness now does affect energy and matter subsequently, just as energy and matter that was set in motion prior to this point of time and space can appear to affect this moment. He's saying, when you step outside of the known realms of cause and effect, you move into the transformative capability 
that consciousness has over matter. That consciousness has over matter. Um, how does that relate to uh, formulation, awareness? Is there a distinction between awareness and consciousness? He says, uh, awareness allows you to be, um, to apprehend an alteration in consciousness. Um, and in consciousness, at the point of consciousness, you alter the changes that occur in matter, time, and space. But it can only be altered from the perception of the consciousness interacting with the mechanisms of time and space. It cannot, um, in and of itself, change itself, but consciousness can get lost in the effects of its own uh, makings. And this is one of the errors that I made in my uh, mathematical formulations, in that I was not able to properly identify from my own experience the direct effect that our awareness has on altering the effects of any of our conceptions for time, space, and matter. It's important you bear in mind that time, space, and matter are merely one small portion of a limitless expanse of what you call consciousness or energy. That the alterations in the densities of gravity, time, space, and matter, the alterations in the densities of those uh, begin to change one's perception of what the meaning, causes, and effects are of the states of matter from that perspective. I'm getting a little confused because I'm not quite sure what, he, what he's saying. Um, so what does that mean? Can we put that in a language that... that that anybody can understand. When, when you are no longer attuned through your consciousness, through the mechanisms of matter, then your perceptual capabilities are altered significantly in that you no longer are bound to perceive experience through the exclusivity of your five physical senses. So when one has established enough of an awareness of these non-physical causative energies to matter, then one can actually begin to resolve a lot of the unresolvable mathematical considerations, but not from within the subjectivity of the considerations themselves. In other words, you must be able to differentiate what you are as the a conceptualizer of an idea and the place from where the conception for the idea originated. These are two very different states of uh, consciousness which will produce two very different states of effect in matter, time, and space. The concept of being able to move slower or faster than light is resolved when you factor in the concept of consciousness and awareness. Without those two aspects, it becomes very uh, cumbersome for you to be able to consider how certain ideas, such as traveling at speeds fast and light, can possibly be achieved. They cannot be achieved from a condition of knowledge and awareness that does not have a knowledge and awareness of that which is one wishes to consider beyond that which is being experienced by what one considers. Can, okay. I'm understanding that to mean, and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm understanding that to mean that if we are able to move our awareness out of exclusively being and trying to figure out what life is from our physical body's perspective exclusively, that if we're able to move our awareness to a point of consciousness that's beyond matter, but not separate from it, that we can affect changes in the uh, material conditions of what we have labeled life in a uh, 
a more effective way and in a more obvious way, but you cannot get a comprehension of something beyond where you are unless you move beyond you where you are. And this can only happen if you understand how to move your consciousness and your awareness outside of the existing framework of the perceptual mechanisms you utilize to comprehend time, space, and matter. Um, and again, I don't... <laughs> okay. That's, he's saying this is all that he had to say and that there are some of you that will have great understanding and great meaning and excitement about this and you will know this when you hear it. He's saying that the idea of the vibration, the feeling that goes, um, uh, which is the emotion, which is the energy, the gross energy that is an effect of your conscious awareness in relation to matter. Consciousness and awareness, when they interact with matter, um, generates an emotional energy that begins to induce changes in the physical structure of these uh, systems of matter as you understand matter to be. For there are many levels and planes of consciousness that what you call matter functions very differently under very different sets of uh, laws, chemistry, and, um, um, what's the word? You just said a word. Chemistry? Is what he's saying a word that I don't understand. Um, but I feel that what is meant is that when we move our awareness beyond um, what we conventionally understand ourselves to be, that we can influence time, space, and matter differently than what we can right now. So, like, um, like from my from my place in consciousness, I can influence my hand to open and close, just as you can influence um, your hand to open and close. But I can only do that from the perspective of knowing that I have a hand, that, that I have a relationship with it, that I'm connected to it in some way, and then I can affect that result. Um, we can see this process illustrated in the development of young children who have no awareness that they are even a physical body. They are just an awareness and a consciousness in a form but it is, has neither definition nor individualized awareness of itself. And you can observe as it begins to develop an awareness of the different facets of this material world, it begins to uh, assume and take control and authority over them. But without that awareness, the form would not change of, with any great significance. One could not learn to move their hand if one did not know they could do so or be aware that they even had a hand. Um, this is why I came to this one originally with the concept that the key thing missing in most of the equations that I performed was the concept of consciousness and awareness. That with those two aspects and understanding true that it is emotion that is energy set into motion into a material medium um, can you be more specific about that? Because it sounds ambiguous to me. Um, matter is the re matter is the reduced matter is the reduced vibration of conscious awareness um, slowed down in frequency so as to become perceptible to the senses. Um, we teach children to do this by our interaction with them from the moment they are born, and we bring their consciousness down from an undifferentiated spectrum into a finite spectrum. And I'm being stretched right now because there's information and ideas that he's trying to communicate that I, I, I have no framework in my brain for. Um, and I often, you know, I often ask this question, why is it that I can't just allow these beings to communicate a formula directly through me or a specific uh, thing that somebody that truly understands what and who Einstein was, what his mathematics means. I'm, again, I'm not a mathematics person. I'm not a scientific genius. I just, um, I open up to different realms of consciousness to let me experience 
knowledge and information from a different perspective, from different beings on different wavelengths of, of uh, awareness um, or consciousness. Anyway, uh, that was our conversation this morning about that consciousness was the, is the one constant in all of creation. Consciousness is the one constant. Um, he's saying our definitions of consciousness change by the level at which we are perceiving our experience of time, space, and matter. Whether you call it time, space, and matter on this physical plane that you exist on, or uh, time, space, and matter on a non-physical dimension, for they are just at different rates and frequencies of existence that aren't perceptible to your senses in and of themselves, for your senses are geared specifically to this and these wavelengths of experience. When you can shift your awareness and consciousness beyond the known perceptual mechanisms of your body and your mind, you will then begin to access many of the so-called secrets, which are just available truths waiting to be discovered. So your pursuit, if you seek to know how to solve some of the great questions, needs to be pursued from the perspective of understanding that you are not that physical form. You are the consciousness and the awareness that operates through the form and your awareness of that which you are beyond form opens up that which you do not know to your um, physical mechanism's ability to perceive it. It is you, your consciousness and your awareness that brings forth new information to be expressed as alterations in your experience of this material world. And this is all that we have ever done is altered the experience and expression of matter in terms of how we have learned to interact with it scientifically scientifically right um, anyway I want I, I, I'm really curious to hear what what your feedback is about this I'm gonna to have to review this again as I do with everything that comes up I have to, have to review it to understand I don't research any of the beings that I, I uh, have come through me. They just come. They, we start talking. Like I said, I'm walking down the street, and all of a sudden this voice starts talking to me, and then I find out it's, they're saying they're Einstein. I just communicate through what it is they want to communicate through. And anybody can learn to do this. You, I, every human being on this planet has within us this awareness that organizes matter. I mean, look at... We eat food, it gets reorganized into blood and skin and bone. There's an intelligence that is within us, that is us, that can reorganize things more effectively than, than the way our small, puny little mind knows. And yet, he's, he's saying to me right now, it's important you understand that that small, puny mind is not you. When you recognize that you are beyond that, in fact, you are, he's saying, he's showing me this, like this funnel, you are the infinite funnel bringing much to a little and a lot to a little uh, and I'm understanding that to mean that when we're able to access information outside of our known way of experiencing reality that we begin to uh, affect matter very differently than what we conventionally know anyway I want to thank you I didn't mean to go on this long uh, I, I just flow with what they flow with and He's good now. He's saying he's gotten out what he needs to get out. And I'm just, because I'm also trying to comprehend the vibration, the feeling that I have right now, the excitement that I have right now, that, that we as a species are about to transcend our, our old model of believing that just the body and this physical world are the only um, causative elements in what is occurring here that we can change what we're doing in this world significantly by moving out of what we know about what we know into what we don't know about what we know so that we can begin to open our minds and our hearts and our souls to being a different species than we have been for the last 70,000 years that we can actually restore a state of love and grace to humanity as a unified whole 
And that process is underway right now, that we are actually in that process of restoring humanity to a unified whole. And every time any one of us moves into a state of what I call love or grace, any time we, we have that in our consciousness, we alter uh, this realm. Our consciousness alters matter. It's ultimate. And it's exactly what he's just said. And, and I'd be curious to know what some of the, the mathematical people that actually hear this, what they would have to say about the idea of how consciousness and awareness affect time, space, and matter based on what, what has been said today. Anyway, much love to you. Thank you for stopping by for today's morning message. And um, if you want to know more about what I do, please go to my website, williammichaelforbes.com. And again, have yourself a wonderful, joyful day, and much love.